do most of my research at the moment on the financial system, and it's particularly relevant at the moment given all the crises around the world in, in the financial sector. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you particularly about is debt and uh, why everybody's so concerned about debt. Uh, secondly, probably why Australia has been so concerned about debt. Um, the difficulty is for many countries that they have so much debt that when there's some fiscal or monetary adjustment needed, the government's got no space to move. It can't uh, lower taxes because uh, it's already in a very difficult financial position because it has too much debt. Now, debt's obviously a good thing in some circumstances that you would want to have uh, to smooth your lifetime consumption, basically, as an individual. And sometimes for countries, they also need to uh, do things to smooth their debt. In Australia's history, in the 19th century in particular, there was a long period where the government built lots of railways and ports and water systems and all those sorts of things, which increased the level of public debt quite significantly. Uh, by uh, 1900, uh, public debt in Australia was equal to 100% of GDP, starting from basically zero in, 19, in 1860. So we basically had 100% uh, of GDP uh, in government debt, and then we had a big crisis. It wasn't driven by the government, it was a, a property bubble, particularly in Melbourne, uh, but one of the consequences of the crisis was that uh, income fell and the government wasn't able to pay its debt. And so they had lots and lots of struggles, both Private people lost a lot of money, but also the government struggled at the time uh, to finance its debt. It had to cut expenditure. All this austerity you see in Greece and other places was something we experienced in Australia in the 1890s. It was a very, very big recession. Depression, probably, a better to say. What then happened is we were very unlucky. We started to uh, reduce our debt, but then the First World War came along, <clears throat> and the government again had to borrow a lot, increase its debt level up to about 120, 130% of GDP. And if you, as you can see from the picture, the sort of the spike uh, after the, uh, in about the First World War period. What then happened is that uh, we continued to borrow during the 1920s and more uh, water systems and railways in particular. Um, so that when the Great Depression happened, we still had a very high level of debt. And as you can see from the chart, uh, the level of debt to GDP rose closer to 200%, which is far above the level that Greece and other countries have at the moment. Then, of course, we had the Second World War, and the government had to increase its debt even more because they borrowed lots of money, obviously, to, to pay for the war. So during that period between about 1930 and 1950, Australia's debt to GDP was well above the sorts of levels of uh, Greece, Italy, Spain, and many of those countries that you see in crisis at the moment. What happened? Over the subsequent 40 years, from uh, 1945 to 1985, more or less, we cut debt, as you can see again from the graph, down to about 20% of GDP. How did it happen and who paid for it? Well, the main, reason, the main way it happened is that anybody who had uh, lent money to the government had done so at a fixed interest rate. What then happened, of course, is, is that the government actually allowed lots of inflation. There was lots of inflation. You got 5% uh, return on your government bonds and the inflation rate is 8% you're effectively losing 3% a year. Some of the calculations are that most of the reduction in debt in Australia actually occurred because bondholders, people who had fixed savings, actually had their savings uh, decrease in value as a result of the government continuing to, to actually allow uh, levels of inflation which were well above the rates of return of a lot of these debt holders. Government was even trickier. It actually forced the banks to hold a lot of government debt so that you would put your deposit in the bank and then the bank would actually have to buy government bonds uh, with that. And then the rate of return, the rate of interest on the government bonds was below the rate of inflation. So not just private debt holders who, borrowed government, who lent money to the government directly, but also anybody who put their money in the bank actually was effectively losing money year by year because the inflation rate was above the, um, uh, above the, the, um, the return on, on their deposits. So effectively, over the space of about 40 years, anybody who had savings, either through the bank or through the bond market, actually had their money taken away from them progressively to pay down the public debt. As you can see, it took us 40 years to reduce our debt, and the people who paid for it were the savers in the community. 
One of the reasons that Australia then has got such an aversion to debt, which you probably grew up with, Peter Costello and then Wayne Swan and uh, Tony Abbott and everybody complaining about debt, is because it took us 50 years to get over the problems of having too much debt. We're trying to make sure we never do that again. Let's not get trapped the way many other countries have.